Well, I, when I met Pope Francis the first, and we gave him, we gave him, you know, the general secretary and the vice president of Lutheran Federation, we gave him a rusted pot from Somalia. He said, we need today, the church needs today an ecumenism of martyrdom. I asked him, is it red or white? He said, we, we need to have a white witness, but if necessarily, we are ready for the red. And I think the church today has a power. And the power is in the message which we have, in the justification by faith, in grace, in the midst of merits. In, uh, we have the power, you see, uh, uh, of moderation. We have the power of witness in, in, in the world. Now, with this power, we are not using it. Politicians are telling me, you have a power, raise your voice for justice, raise for, your, for peace, raise your voice for, for Jerusalem. I think the Christian church has a power, and that power is not divided. It's in unison and in unity. If we together can use it, then the world will say, look how much they love each other, not look how much they are divided. And for me, today we are like the apostles' time. With all our history, problems, whatever, which are understandable, the world must say, see us united to say, look how much love they love each other. So you are very much involved in this week of prayer for Christian unity. Well, I think, you know, to participate as a bishop in such, you know, a week of unity, for praying for unity is very essential that we heads of churches show that we are an integral part of the church in Jerusalem and we are with our people and grassroots praying that we together may become one. Yes, we are telling everybody what unites us is much more than, than divides us. And we have in practice to show that we are in unity. We believe in the same Jesus. He is our savior. We believe uh, we believe in the redemption that happened in Jerusalem for all of us. I think the importance and the significance of this week of prayer in Jerusalem is that we are united to see that we are multi-denominational, multicultural, and to see that love joins us all together in this service and that Christ's love embraces all of us, and that is the significance. In your sermon in the Church of the Redeemer, you made the point that, uh, I liked it very much how you put it with this boy who brought the two fish and the five loaves. Well, I think, you know, the boy who had the, 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 two, uh, the, the two fish and five loaves brought, I mean, was approached by the apostles by asking him to give it to Jesus. He did not tell them, oh, I will, I will starve. He did not tell them, my, mo my mom will scold me if I give my, my, my lunch. He has put it in the hand of Jesus, and it was in abundance blessed. It's the same thing that every church of us, be it Orthodox, be it Catholics, be it Lutherans, be it Anglicans, be it Reformed, uh, uh, Baptists, whatever, all of us have gifts. If these gifts which we are having, we put it in the name of Jesus, in the, the hands of Jesus, and ask him to bless it, imagine what blessing will be in the world. But if everyone keeps the talents for themselves and does not share it with the other and leave it with the other, then we are in a problem. Today it's a time to put aside all our disagreement, dissensions, uh, all our problems, and look to Christ and look for the unity of the church because the world is asking a witness from the church and that witness can be see, only seen in unity of love.